In this video, we're going to practice simplifying expressions involving exponents, including negative exponents. Make sure you, in the end, have all your exponents should be negative, and there should be no parentheses anywhere. So looking at problem number one, remember when you're multiplying um, variables, this is where you add the exponents. So this should be x to the ninth power, because I'm adding these exponents, and that's going to be y to the fifth power. So that's it for problem number one. Any questions so far? OK. When you have a power raised to a power like this, that's when you multiply. So this is going to be x to the negative 10th power. <laughs> Bless you, Ms. Don. So when you, no, you're fine. Yeah, she's going to be sneezing and coughing throughout the video. So we love Miss Dawn, so that's cool. All right, we'll look back years from now and remember, <coughs> remember Miss Dawn. Um, don't forget, when you have a negative power, it doesn't actually mean anything's negative. It means you have to drop that expression to the other side of the fraction. So this is going to be 1 over x to the 10th power. All right, when you have stuff inside of parentheses that can be simplified, you should always evaluate whatever's inside the parentheses first. So I'm going to do that. Um, so just doing what's inside. First, I'm just going to square this 2. So this is actually negative 4 still in here. All right, you square the 2, the negative just sits there. Um, but then I've got negative 4 squared, so it's going to become positive 16 anyway. Any questions on number <coughs> three? Okay. All right, number four. What happens when you have something raised to the zero power? Right, it just goes away. It becomes a one, technically, but one times anything is still itself. So that, that part is gone. So I'm, I'm really just dealing with this aspect. Um, so be careful. This is like x to the 1 power. So this 2 is going to wind up multiplying both of these. So I'm going to wind up with x squared <coughs> z to the 10th power. So that's going to be the final answer here. Any questions on number 4? OK. On number 5, you can sort of look at this like three separate little problems. It's, I have 6 over 3. I have x to the 10th power over x to the 5th power. And I have y to the 4th power over y squared. I haven't really changed the problem <coughs> yet. It's just a way of looking at it. <coughs> now, 6 over 3, first of all, <coughs> 6 divided by 3 is just 2. All right? I'm not going to subtract or anything like that. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And I'm going to put that 2 on the top. Um, now, x to the 10th power over x to the 5th power. Remember, x to the 10th power is like, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Did I miscount? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's like 10 x's over 5 x's. So the 5 x's in the bottom are going to cancel out 5 x's in the top. That's going to leave 5 x's in the top. So that's why I'm going to have x to the fifth power in the top. And sure, you can look at it as 10 minus 5. But if you think of it as canceling, it'll help you be clear <coughs> um, where the leftover x's will be, in this case, <coughs> in the top. Um, same thing with the y's. y to the fourth power, in your mind, you should be picturing y, 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 all right, over y, y. So these two y's are going to cancel out two of these y's. That's going to leave y squared in the numerator. <coughs> and that's it. So really, this is the final answer right here. Any questions on number five? OK. Um, number six going to have a couple of steps to it. Um, I would still simplify everything inside the parentheses first. Okay, so for a minute, just ignore the negative 2 out there. We'll deal with that later. 
Um, so inside here, what do I have going on? Um, well, looking at the 4 over 4 squared, uh, some students will go ahead and write 4 over 16. That's fine, but if you really understand what you're doing, that's not necessary. Remember, 4 over 4 squared means 4 over 4 times 4. All right, so if you picture this mentally, then you'll understand <coughs> that the 4 in the top <coughs> and one of the 4s in the bottom are going to cancel each other out. So you're going to be left with 1 4 in the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to have 1 4 in the bottom. Now, why did I make my fraction that big? I have no idea. Try that again. So I'm going to have 1 4 in the bottom. Now, looking at the x's, just like we did before, I have 8 in the top, 5 in the bottom. The 5 in the bottom are going to cancel out 5 in the top, and that's going to leave 3, x to the third power. So this is the answer to number 6. Any questions on number 6? Okay. Hold on, wait a minute. So problem number 6 is not finished. I had modified the problem um, by scribbling out the negative 2 um, so we could work on the part that's on the inside. And uh, we've done that now, but um, we still need to deal with the negative 2 that's on the outside. So, all right, so we have simplified what's on the inside. But now, what about the negative 2? Um, now, here's the deal. Um, if you have a fraction and a negative power, like negative 2, um, it's all about the reciprocal. This would be the same thing as um, b over a to the positive 2 power. So you just do the reciprocal and make it a positive power. After that, you can go ahead and square things or whatever you need to do. Okay, so think reciprocal. When you have a fraction and a negative power. So um, in this case, how is that going to look? So it's the reciprocal, so I'm going to have um, 4 over x to the third power, and then that's going to be raised to the positive 2 power, all right? Um, I did the reciprocal and made it a positive. Now I can go ahead and square these individual parts. So 4 squared, of course, is 16. And when I do x to the third power squared, I need to multiply these. So this will be x to the sixth power. So this is, in fact, the answer to number 6, not just x to the third power over 4. OK. Number 7. Um, notice that the roots are the same, 4 through, 4 through. If the roots are the same, you can go ahead and do the multiplication. OK, so this is going to give you the fourth root of What's 27 times 3? 81. 81. So that's the fourth root of 81. Um, now, if you have a calculator, I mean, we used to use these tables a lot. Um, but at the moment, I didn't give you a table. Um, but don't forget about the table. Fourth root of 81 is 3. But on a calculator, <coughs> remember how to do the fourth root? If you type the number 4 first, and then if you hit second caret, it turns it into a fourth root. So fourth root of 81 is 3. Yes, Miss Swift? What if the roots are different numbers? Something has to be the same in order to, to be able to do the problem. Okay. If the, um, either the roots have to be the same, or the number underneath has to be the same. Okay. Are there any, are there any on here somewhere where the numbers underneath are the same instead? Yeah, it's just a question. Um, so just be aware. Say if the roots were different, like um, say if I had the cube root of x. Um, and then I had the fourth root of x. The way I would simplify a problem like this is like this. 
something had to be the same. In this case, the part underneath is the same, okay? So what I would have to do is turn this into a fractional power. Do you guys remember that the cube root of x is the same thing as x to the one-third power, okay? And the fourth root of x is the same thing as x to the one-fourth power. So because the bases are the same, Remember, just like when we would have um, n to the third power times n to the fifth power, um, what would that be, Ms. Swift? n to the eighth power. That would be n to the eighth power. So that shows me that you know in a situation like this, you add. Okay, Jakai, head up. Head up, eyes open, my friend. Um, we could do the same thing right here. We can add these powers. So I'd, I, I would wind up doing one third plus one-fourth, okay? <coughs> All right, that's seven-twelfths. So that would give us um, x to the seven-twelfths power. Now remember that this is the power and this number is the root. It's always power over root. So we started with radicals, so we have to turn it back into radicals again. So in the end, we would have the twelfth root of x. And it doesn't matter whether you put the seventh power in here or if you put it like out here. You just gotta either way. Alright, but that would be your answer. That's what you would do if the roots were different, but the part underneath was the same. Oh, thank you. You are super welcome. <coughs> okay, so number eight. Um, first of all, as long as you got your TI-30XS multi-view, you should try typing it into your calculator. Okay, I mean, I'm going to explain how to do it in smaller steps, but you should be in the habit, you know, if you've got the advantage, I say use it. So 64 to the two-thirds power. So 64 to the fraction mode, two-thirds power. Oh, look, 16. Okay, like why not, right? All right, but just giving you more information, remember, it's power over root. So this would be the same thing as the cube root of 64 and then the second power. So, for example, if you didn't have a calculator but you did have one of these tables, you could do the cube root of 64 and get 4 which is how we did it back in the day. And then four squared is 16. All right, but if you have a calculator, use it. Okay, um, how about this? The so fourth root of four squared. All right, fourth root. Remember, you type the four first, second caret. Now I can do four squared. That's two. All right, so we know the answer is going to be 2. Um, but, you know, this is the fourth root of 16, because 4 squared is 16. And if you had one of these, I meant, sorry, not one of these, one of these, the fourth root of 16 is 2. Yeah. Okay, any questions on number 9? All right, number 10. Isn't this the one that you gentlemen were asking me about? 17. No, it was 17. 17. Wow, I'm nowhere near you. Okay, so I have um, 7,776 to negative one fifth power. I'm curious what the calculator will give me. If I ever see any decimals, that's not acceptable. Okay, so watch out for that. Now I want to see any decimals on anybody's paper. <coughs> so, but I don't know if this is going to give me a decimal or not, but let's, let's give it a try. 7,776 to negative one fifth. Okay, so seven, 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 six to the fraction mode. Well, I should have put the negative first. Negative, what was it, one fifth? Yes. One fifth. Okay, I was lucky. All right, one sixth. All right, so good to know. Like, that's the answer. But um, what's the calculator doing? Remember, a negative power 
is just dropping you down to the denominator. So this is the same thing as 7,776 to the 1 -fifth power in the denominator. Remember, the 1 -fifth power is the same thing as the fifth root. So this is the same thing as 1 over the fifth root yeah, of 7,776. And like if we had a table, we could go the fifth root <coughs> of 7,776 is 6. So that's why it's 1 6. All right, that's what's really happening. OK, number 11. This is going to be no solution. I can tell that right now. Um, the reason why is because we have a negative number under an even root. OK, now you might have been thinking about imaginary numbers. And that's a good place for your brain to go when you see a negative under a root and you know it can't be done. But I is for square roots. It's not for fourth roots or sixth roots. So for this class, at this level, if you have a negative number under an even root other than two, other than the square root, we're just going to put um, no solution. You know, or undefined. Just, just put no solution. OK. Um, number 12. Negative 343 to the 4 thirds power. I'm going to try the calculator first. OK, that's 2,401. OK. Um, just to understand, power over root, this would have been the same thing as the cube root of negative 343, all raised to the fourth power. Um, so even if I had to do it with one of these, all right, the cube root of 343 is 7. So that means that this would have been negative 7. So it's a matter of negative 7 to the fourth power. Um, I know that if I do a negative to an even power, it's going to be positive. So it's just a matter of what's 7 to the fourth power. OK, and there it is. 7 to the fourth power is 2,401. So, so we have to do it this way on the test. No. OK, so that's the end. Occasionally, you'll get something that your calculator won't do, and you'll get a decimal. So I, know, I never know when that's going to happen. So one of the reasons why I keep showing you guys how to do it is, you know, some, you're going to punch something in your calculator. It's going to give you a decimal. It's going to be like, what now? But if you kind of remember this, you'll know what to do. And you can all, I'll always give you one of these tables I keep showing you. If you ever need one, I'll give you a table. OK. All right, I think I'm going to stop this video here and pick up on the next problem.